Welcome to the Echo Cast, episode 127. We're going to call this one TU12 Incoming. This is a podcast about the Division 2, its community news, speculation, and updates. I am Bond Diesel. I do Division stuff such as this podcast, Twitch streams, and YouTube videos, mostly about Division 2, but about other gaming topics as well. Please take a moment to subscribe to and rate the podcast on whatever platform you are listening to it on this episode we will talk about the state of the game with a little bit of tu12 talk the extra life fundraiser that's going on next gen incoming consoles let's go what's probably going to become a a weekly or a or in every podcast segment the division three lookout and uh no the division two cross save and more I would like to thank this month's Patreon supporters, Hassan, Christian, Darren, Tim, PK, and Dale. Okay, so here's the deal. This is off script here. Um, my ad ran out with Anchor, so uh, there will be no more ads. Yay, I'm sure. Anyone who listens is super pumped about that. So, because of that, if you're willing at all to jump on the Patreon, throw a few bucks, I'd really appreciate it. I don't need it. So let me make that very clear. This is weird times. You know, people are strapped. I get it. It's fine. What the money does is it, I use it to buy things like the Series X, um, like the mic I'm using and upgrading software and hardware on my PC. Um, there's no obligation, but it is appreciated. What I'm willing to do, which I should do, is if people jump on the Patreon, um, I will do more content on there. I can even do exclusive content on there, or I can release, say, the podcast, you know, on Wednesday on Patreon, and then release it on Friday or Saturday or something everywhere else. It's up to you guys. I'm willing to hear things out, uh, whatever you would like, uh, even if it's just anything. I don't care. Let me know. I'm willing to do it. If you would like to do that, check out patreon.com slash bondiesel. Okay, for the state of the game recap, we had, uh, let me load it up here. We had Hamish, Trick, and McKenzie talking mostly about uh, TU-12. So they did have a quick uh, priority alert about a routine maintenance yesterday involving just some bugs. I'm not gonna go into it. Uh, We're past that at this point. Um, But they basically dropped Uh, Here's things that will be in TU-12. New weapons, brands, exotics, and more. Uh, The optimization station is returning as part of the recal station. Uh, Inventory size is increasing on the character, not the storage. Uh, You can now, or you will be able to, activate your mask permanently. Uh, Skill changes that are coming. Um and a global event shop, as well as a bunch of the summit updates and changes. Uh, so the big news I think from TU 12, uh, was the optimization station. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, it's something that people have been asking for, for a while. Um, people were asking for it, I think within like a few months of the game coming out. And I remember back then saying like, Hey, that optimization station is not coming until this game's probably basically done. And here we are, <laughs> TU-12, optimization station is coming. So it looks like it's going um, it's going to require its own type of materials um, that seem like they're going to be somewhat passively earned when you're just doing regular activities. Um, but it, it's, you aren't just going to be able to go in and optimize everything, uh, which is a, is a good way to do it. That's fine with me. Um, it shouldn't just, you know, as soon as TU-12 drops, everyone's builds are perfect. That's not how it should be. So I'm glad. Um, it's, it's like that, but it's really cool. Um, 
If you want pictures of this, you can check out my Twitter at Von Diesel. Honestly, this is, uh, I, I've said this before, this isn't a bad episode of State of the Game to just watch um, and see some of this in person, but you can get kind of the gist of it from me if you would like. Uh, please ignore that sound. Um, <laughs> the um, the rest of mostly what they were talking about were summit improvements and changes. So um, they're adding challenges and commendations and other stuff involving uh, the summit uh, and they're updating the project that's associated with it. Um, so the challenges are going to be like short and long-term things. Um, and they're going to reward things like extra caches, blueprints, um, spec points. If you have a character that still needs to be upgraded, things like that. Um, and they're just basically different challenges. The commendations are just commendations. It's um, the same type of thing that we've been seeing um, that we're just kind of mysteriously, oddly missing um, from this. Um, they're also adding challenges. Um, so the, what the challenges are going to do is involve things like XP, targeted loot, um, and challenge caches specifically. Um, and, and I believe those are going to be like weekly. So they'll update, um, it's either weekly or, uh, you can only do them once per, uh, one through 100, I believe is what they said. Um, they showed some of the commendations, uh, there it's nothing too crazy. Um, there is one that is 30 hours of service in the summit. So, I mean, again, you'll passively get that. I don't know if I'm going to play 30 hours of the summit. I also haven't really played much of the summit. Uh, that's why I'm excited about my Xbox coming next week so I can jump in again. But that one does have a cool uh, doggo uh, arm patch that you can get. Um, they did show um, some other kind of... Uh, quality of life things like uh the every time you hit a checkpoint in the summit you'll now get a targeted loot reward so whatever you have the setting set up for targeted loot that will pop up and you'll you'll get that they um, talked about wanting to make the loot just better in the summit in general um there's a the, the project is updated so when you complete the project um, you complete 30 floors in the summit. It's a weekly project. You get an exotic cache, a named item, a crafting blueprint, and five um, specialization points. Again, if you have any specializations that you need those for. Um, they gave just some general improvements for the summit as well. Uh, more objectives, um, reduced frequency of drone objectives. Um, slightly increased chance of rogue encounters on legendary, reduced cooldown between the possible rogue encounters, uh, tenth um, available directive. There'll be a new one, um, and it replaces specialization ammo um, in in missions in the open world and in, in the summit, obviously. Um, and then they have the yeah the weekly project. So. Um, a few of the other little things that they talked about during this show um, was deployed skills, uh, specifically the turret is what they showed. You can now pick it up um, the way that you can the hive and and say there's half of your turret life is left or the time it's available. It will take off half of the cooldown. Um, so it's actually that's awesome. I think people have wanted that for a while, especially skill build people like myself. There is also um, the, the mask option. So when you look uh, into the, um, the, the, the little uh, menu, when you're in the, in the inventory screen, there's now a selection in the inventory options to always have your mask on. Um, they are increasing the backpack spots to 150, I believe up from 120. They are increasing the actual stash space, but the backpack is, uh, is improving and you're getting some more space there. Um, there will now be a global event shop. So you'll earn, uh, stars or these type of credits while you're playing global event things and you can spend them on basically buying caches. It goes everything from, uh, optimization caches. So it'll be materials for that season four cache named item recalibration. Um, there's a bunch of different ones that cost different things, obviously connected to how good they are. Let's see. We also had, uh, the big horn has a change where it's, uh, it's magazine is up from 30 to 40. They said they did that to help in the assault rifle mode. 
uh, so it's a little bit more useful. Um, I still don't have this gun, uh, but I really like the Steyr Aug. Um, so I hope to get it at some point, hopefully when I start playing again next week. Uh, and that was that was the gist of it. So um, it was a good stay of the game. They did point out that next week on the 11th is when they're going to talk about uh, the new weapons, the new gear, the new brand, the new uh, uh, gear sets, the new exotics. Uh, one of the rewards, I believe, for the challenges in the summit is a new assault rifle, which we uh, so far haven't heard anything about, um, but we will next week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, it was a good show. Um, it was nice to see them back after a month um they didn't mention like the nightmare mode i don't know if they will that may be a thing that they talk about like the week it comes out or something um but i'm under the impression from just looking at the calendar that we should be seeing tu12 slash season four beginning in the first couple weeks of december Okay, in other gaming news, uh, there is an Extra Life fundraiser going on. Um, I am uh, part of the Kind of Funny Games team. Uh, if you look on there, um, I actually raised 100 bucks, so I'm really uh, happy about that and thankful to those who have donated. What I'm going to throw out is that if you want to donate and uh, put your name in there, um, you can do so. Uh, and I am going to offer up a bunch of random Division Two swag that I've... Uh, collected over the years uh, if we hit 250 bucks i'll randomly pick one of the people who have donated money uh, so it's going to be stuff um, such as like the comic books that came out um, pins notebooks like hats stuff like that that i've received um, a kind of random thing is a uh, i'm willing to give away an assassin's creed signed like photo thing that i got at e3 um, basically just a bunch of random Division 2 crap that most Division 2 fans would, uh, I think, enjoy. So um, be sure to check that out. And if you're willing to donate, um, it's all over my Twitter. Um, it's in my streams when I do that. If you go to extralife.com, you should be able to search for Bond Diesel um, and, and, and donate there. So, uh, And if you're watching this on like YouTube, um, I'll try to put a link somewhere like in the comments where you can donate. Uh, the other bit of gaming news is talking about the impending next-gen console releases. So we have the PS5 coming out on the 12th and the Series X coming out on the 10th, as well as the Series S. Uh, there's just gobs of videos and content now out there. Um, I mostly get my stuff from Digital Foundry. They're the ones that I, I feel like tend to be the least like fanboyish and, and stuff. Um, and just kind of give the facts and then move on from there. I mean, obviously, I've got a few of my fanboy accounts that I watch as well. But I go into them knowing that they, uh, you know, have a slant. Um, for me, I'm really excited. Um, obviously, I want to check out Division 2. I'm still bummed about no uh, next-gen stuff. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I want to check out Valhalla. I'm actually really excited for that. I've decided to skip Legion. Um, Watch Dogs just... It's not my thing. The game just looks a little too goofy and a little too, like, just shallow to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, and I really want to check out Gears 5. So I've had multiple people tell me, like, hey, like, you like cover shooters. You would probably like Gears 5. I've never been into the Gears franchise ever. It, it's always been kind of cringy to me, if you want me to be totally honest. Um, but seeing some videos, especially on Digital Foundry, about some of the improvements and stuff to Gears 5 on the new systems. If anything, I just want to check it out for the uh, visual spectacle. Um, but I'm also excited just to, you know, maybe I'll actually like it. I I played it for like a minute when it came out and just said, eh, this still isn't really my thing. Um, but I think I should give it another shot. Uh, the last bit of just general gaming news is, more, is actually just about a video I saw. Uh, that I highly suggest you check out. It's called Feedback, and it's actually like a stream highlight from someone named Day9 TV. And I don't know much about this dude, so if he's like an awful person, then my bad. But this video is worth watching because um, it gives the perspective. Now, this guy's a content creator, but he obviously talks to a lot of devs in his day-to-day -day because he basically goes on this giant rant about how the feedback that devs get from players about games is completely useless. Um, they don't want it. They didn't ask for it. <laughs> like it's almost all meaningless mumbling BS. 
And I think, you know, I think over the years, if you've been listening to this for a long time or pay attention to my Twitter and so on, um, you'll know that I've kind of been expressing this and maybe a little bit less, um, uh, blunt fashion over the years, but like, even from my experience talking to devs, like, I mean, you just have to be, you know, all of all gaming communities are like this. So this is definitely not like a division exclusive thing, but it is definitely a thing of like, it's like a backseat driver or something where like no one asks for the input. Um, and, and the point that I've seen devs make before is that like, they're way more interested in hearing your feedback on like gameplay, like, like hearing about your experience, like, Oh, I did that level and it was cool, but I didn't like this and that. Um, and then they can use that knowledge to actually improve things where what doesn't really help is for them to, uh, is for a player to say, you guys suck. You're stupid. Why did you change that? I don't like that. You should do it like this because well, that it's, that's not very useful feedback in general, but one thing I found over the years, especially with division, since that's mostly the kind of people I get to talk to is like most of the issues that players bring up, like they know about, and they may even agree, but just because they aren't fixing it doesn't mean they don't know it's there or they don't know it's a thing. Um, what, what actually happens, at least in my experience is they don't have the resources or the time to do it. Um, there, there's something that has to do with it where they just can't fix it because it's connected to another issue or it's just too big. Like I said, like a resource issue, or it's just the way they want it to be. Um, with division, the DZ has always been kind of in this, in that category for me, I think, um, the DZ, I believe the developers intend it to be a certain way. And a lot of the players who gravitate towards it want it to be a different thing. And there's this thing where, you know, the, the players, you know, just assume that since they paid for the game, that the devs should want it to be the way they want it to be. And while obviously the devs would like to make the experience catered more to the people who want to play it, that also doesn't mean that they just have to make the game that you scream at them on Twitter to make. Um, the biggest thing that this guy talks about in this video that just had me, like, I was so hyped when he started talking about it was ripping on the, the people on Twitter and YouTube or even YouTube or like YouTubers who make their own videos because they're super guilty of this is when they're giving quote unquote feedback is to literally suggest basically a new game and just expect it to happen with the division. Uh, most people would have seen this in things like the PTS where they'll introduce like a new system, like say the summit and people will check out the summit and be like, okay, that's fine, but you should do this. And while those ideas are often really cool, uh, they're always completely unrealistic. Um, whether it was division one where people would be like, well, you guys should just open up central park and let it be a, a BR mode as if like central park is just done and sitting there and waiting and they just couldn't think of anything to do with it, that it wouldn't take months, if not years of modeling and coding and, and all of the design and all of the implementation, um, to, to do those things. Uh, they just, you know, people will suggest things like, Oh, just, you know, in a couple of weeks, why don't you just do that? Um, you know, we've seen this with the division as well. Like I said, the summit, someone had a super cool idea about, man, what if the summit was a survival mode where you start on floor one with all green gear. And as you go up the levels, you have to build up your gear and build skills or whatever. Um, super cool idea. Not going to happen. <laughs> like, um, as we've seen and what I've talked about, and since TU 12 is getting a lot of updates to the summit, it seems like the summit came out about three or four or five, six months early. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like it was done. And the idea that like, yeah, uh, there's some super cool ideas with what to do with the summit, but if they're having trouble it, even getting the basic mode done at all, it's not super helpful or realistic to just throw out these grand ideas. Um, you see it a lot from content creators because they want to hype their community up and stuff, which is cool. But what you'll also find is that there's a lot of like 
there's a lot of personalities who follow content creators and Twitter people and stuff like that who like, well, so-and-so said you guys should do this, but you didn't do it. Why are you guys so stupid? And it's like, well, maybe they didn't do it for all the reasons I've said before, or maybe they didn't see it, or maybe it's not what they want to do. Or maybe that content creator was just saying things that are unrealistic because they want people to click on their video. Um, that the video is really good. So again, the guy, the YouTube account is day nine TV. Um, the, the video is labeled feedback, something, um, check it out, listen to it. For me, as someone who's gotten to talk to various devs about stuff, uh, and, and feedback and things like that. Um, it, it, it was a really enlightening video on when I posted it to Twitter, I said that, you know, every division fan should have to watch it 10 times with their eyes held open because, there's a lot of people, both random egghead, you know, accounts on Twitter, all the way to some of the quote unquote biggest division creators could really l watch that video a hundred times over and learn a lot. Uh, even I did. So this is where I would typically have a mid roll and we no longer have a sponsor through anchor. So at least for now, and I don't know, um, the last time I got a sponsor was back when division two came out. So I had about three or four times the listens I'm getting right now. So there's a decent chance. I just won't get a sponsor again. So going back to what I said before with Patreon, if you're willing, if you have the extra funds, if you want to support this thing, and if you want me to do more, really, um, check out patreon.com slash Von Diesel there, there's your ad. Uh, so jumping on to some division two topics, this is probably a bad idea because I don't want to mislead anyone. Um, I don't know if there's a division three, um, I've been winky winked multiple directions with it. So I don't, I don't know, but what we're going to do until I have a reason not to, because it's a little clickbaity and I'm cool with that is, uh, we're going to start, we're going to have a, a division three watch party, uh, you know, a, a, a lookout club on every podcast where I'm going to go through some things I'm thinking either speculative or things I've noticed that, um, you know, may or may not indicate a division three and we'll, go from there because let's be straight up if tu12 is the last update like i think it is uh we're gonna be straining for uh things to talk about on this podcast for a while so so deal with me i know you like it i know you want this too uh so for the first thing i was checking out uh as always the massive um employment stuff um they've gotten rid of the unannounced project that was listed at the stockholm location um which is interesting uh, and, and, and instead now there's nine or 10 listings for the Malmo, uh, massive location for an adventure game. And there's very, there's things all the way from modelers to AI design, which, um, the, if you saw my Twitter a few weeks back or a month or more now, there was a listing specifically asking for a RPG action adventure game, uh, for an AI designer, which is that's division. Like, come on. Now that listing's actually gone. So either they've hired for it uh, or they realized that that wording was a little too suggestive, um, either suggestive in that it was giving away that there's, they're working on another division or that they were up, that they don't want to mislead people like myself um, to th maybe they are working on something different. I don't know. Um, but there are some things listed on there. Uh, they would make sense if there's a division three coming. Um, or, and they'd probably be really cracking on it now, starting, you know, a few months ago and especially now. So, uh, if TU 12 is the end of everything, like I'm kind of thinking it is, that would mean you'd probably see a big shift. Um, and those people have to work on something because that's their job. We'll, we'll see. Um, going back to the stay of the game today, you know, them introducing a thing like the optimization station makes it pretty clear that it's we're probably getting towards the end of content they're giving the, the people the ability to be as powerful as you want to be which is cool uh it's a little kind of a bummer because i don't think i think for the most part people feel a little underwhelmed or just whelmed about division two um i don't think people are as positive about it as they should be i think um there is more to 
congratulate and be happy about, especially compared to the division one. Um, I think missing a survival or an underground mode has a lot of people kind of tunnel visioned about division two. Um, I think if you can get past that, um, you're talking about a game that has like what, three, four, five times the content that division one had. Um, now whether you like it as much or more or less, that's up to you. But, um, I think the optimization station is a pretty clear wink indicator of where things are going or where they might not be going. Um, I did do a poll, uh, division three related where I asked like, you know, what do you think is next for division, uh, a TD three, uh, division two year three, uh, nothing at all, or like a spinoff, um, 50% responded with division three. Uh, I, there's still a few more days left on the poll. I think it's around 300 people. Um, 25% said year three for division two. Uh, and then a few people that were the, the last 25 was split between nothing and a spinoff. So it seems like most people are anticipating a division three. I think it's kind of the natural assumption, even though we really have very little, um, to uh, very little reason to believe that necessarily. Um, we, sh we probably won't get any kind of announcement if it is a thing until, you know, March at the earliest. Um, we haven't had any investor calls or anything suggesting that there might be one coming. Um, you have to consider as well with COVID, even if they have been working on it for like, they've started to work on it for the last so many months, there's a decent chance that because of COVID, uh, if it was intended to come in, you know, March of 2022, you might be looking at, you know, you know, summer, even, you know, fall or winter. Maybe it's been, you know, maybe it gets delayed, pushed back. Maybe it even gets pushed back a whole year to like a March of 2023. Again, that's all assuming that it even happens. Um, and the, the, the last thing that I think is kind of an indicator is what I talked about before with the next gen consoles. Um, I believe like breakpoint, um, you know, most of the games are getting, you know, obviously the newer games, especially are getting some type of next gen, you know, PS five and Xbox series X, um, updates. They're getting 60 FPS or more they're getting, you know, you know, ray tracing and things like that enabled, um, division two is literally getting nothing. Um, division two on the next gen systems, you're going to notice a big difference in load times, um, I think it's, you're going to see basically an elimination of the pop in and the textures being kind of weird because of, uh, you know, the hard drives and stuff like that. Um, I think you're going to see a, a big quality of life improvement in division two on the next gen systems. Um, but they've made it really clear that it's still going to be capped at 30 FPS and that nothing's going to change, which is, um, a bummer in one way, but if it means there's something else coming, then cool. Um, but that's where that mystery lies. So there, that's the division three lookout segment for now. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll cover things as they come up in the future. Um, I did see some chatter about people, um, kind of talking about or asking about whether the division movie, um, is like a TV show now. Um, if it's canceled, if they're not even doing it. Um, so I did some poking around, um, from what I can tell, it's still a movie. I, I didn't see anything indicating um, officially that it's become a, a TV series. And considering they were planning on having uh, the leads be Jake Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain, I highly doubt they would get them to commit to doing like an ongoing series. Um, I would be down for it. That would be super cool. Um, kind of like what they're doing with Assassin's Creed. We know that they have, uh, I believe, multiple shows um, coming down the pipe for that. Um, I believe it's still a movie. Um, I did peek into the, uh, the director and Jessica Chastain and Jake Gyllenhaal's like, uh, they're like IMDB pages to see like what they're working on and stuff. Um, it looks like, uh, Chastain and Gyllenhaal both have like maybe one project that would be ahead of the division starting. And I think the director doesn't have anything, uh, that looks like, he's going to do before he would do division. So there very well may be, you know, them starting to do like the division thing in the next few months in the next year, I would say. Um, and if it's going to be, what would be interesting is that if there is a division three coming, if it comes sometime in 2022, you know, you know, March, summer, winter, whatever, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to release uh, the, the movie, on Netflix and the game at like roughly the same time, uh, really to promote each other. 
Um, I still think the movie is going to be an origin story. Um, David Polfell in his book mentions that um, there was actually a script written for the movie. Uh, David read it and loved it. And then they got a new writer and they scrapped that original script entirely and made a new one, which he really likes as well, or at least he says so in the book. Um, so I'll always kind of wonder what that first script was, but I, I hope that it's Hall is keener. Um, Chastain is one of his squad members, um, showing maybe their recruitment, their training, the beginning of the crisis, and then their activation and then showing Keener get, you know, betrayed, at least in his mind by the JTF and shade and showing his kind of descent, um, and, and, and how his like squad mate deals with that and their, I assume him becoming the villain and her becoming one of the good guys or, or whatever. So, um, that's my, that's my thoughts on the movie as of right now. If I see more, I'll definitely talk about it on further podcasts. Um, the last bit of division topic here is talking about Ubisoft connect the new system. That's kind of merging, um, all of the, you know, play and all of the different Ubisoft things that have kind of fragmented that they're bringing them all to, into one. So there were some people who thought that Division 2 might be eligible for cross save, which would be super cool. Um, and I in in, in an update, you know, this week or last week, basically confirmed that it's not. Uh, when they mentioned Division 2 with Connect, it seems like it's only really um, connected to the part of the system that uh, lets you get upgrades and and there's like tasks and stuff within it that you can earn. Um, you can earn rewards and things like that. I think that's the only thing division two is doing with it. They, they made it pretty clear that it's, it's like games that are just now coming out and games in the future that will get the cross save, um, part of it. And, um, it's not division two. I, I, I kind of was a little annoyed. I saw some people kind of promoting that and acting like that was a surefire thing, um, which again, turns into that, that cycle of life, uh, in the division community where, you know, community members and even, you know, quote unquote leaders will speculate something, everyone gets hyped for it. And then you realize they just made it up <laughs> and then people get mad, but they don't get mad at the creator. They get mad at the devs for not doing the thing that the person created in their own brain. So, um, it looks like it's going to be like Legion and Valhalla. And I think siege, they are going to do cross save. I believe, um, from what I was reading, uh, the new, um, phoenix rising you know those you know everything moving forward so hey you know talking about the division three speculation maybe it would happen with something like that but um it seems like the that situation is closed up that there will not be cross save with division two um maybe i'm wrong maybe i read it wrong but i'm pretty willing to bet that that's a thing Uh, This would normally be the listener questions uh, place. I didn't get any this week. Uh, I didn't really push super hard for it. So, uh, you know, if you want to ask, I always post uh, once or twice on Twitter looking for questions or topics that people want to talk about, as well as my Discord. And you can always ask questions in the comments of the YouTube video. So please do that. I love answering questions. I love talking about topics that I know you all are specifically curious about. Uh, as for content updates, I'm still working on the quality of the stream. I thought I had it in a super good spot, and then I streamed during peak hours and realized that uh, the optional encoding on Twitch, because I'm not a partner, really jacks up my settings and, and the way I'm streaming. So I've been playing mostly Tarkov lately. I am going to start playing Division again next week when I get my new Xbox. Um, but for the stream, I may knock it back down to 720. I'm going to fiddle with it and see if I can make it look a little bit better. And or I just won't stream during uh, super popular hours because then I get my bandwidth taken away from me because I am a lowly pleb affiliate. Um, like I said uh, about the Patreon thing, if uh, I would like to start making videos a little more often, maybe at least like one a week, um, you know, I still have like lore stuff I can cover with division, especially the Intel insights where I kind of cover the, uh, audio recordings because we've had more than enough of those over the last year and a half. Um, and, uh, they're kind of only getting more interesting as the story kind of progresses. Um, so if you have any ideas, let me know. I will, you know, cover things like, uh, you know, the, the new, my new series X when it comes in, maybe do a little bit of a review on that. Um, show off some stuff, some comparisons. I tried to save some uh, 4K clips on my old One X 
that I'm gonna try to recreate that in Division Two with the Series X. Uh, and even though there's no um, upgrade to see if I can do some comparisons and show how, you know, maybe it looks a little better, maybe it doesn't, and we can talk about that. And that's what I have for this week. So I am Bond Diesel on Twitch, where I stream a few times a week. Check me out over there. You can check out my Twitter at Bond Diesel or at the Echo Cast if you don't want all of my personal rantings. You can just get division information. Uh, if you want some cool Echo Cast or Bond Diesel merch, check out designbyhumans.com slash shop slash Bond Diesel or just search for me on their website. That's all I have. So until next time. I'm <laughs> going